I guess I'll call this completing the square part two. So how can we use completing the square in order to write a quadratic equation given in standard form into vertex form? So how can we write something that's given to us like ax squared plus bx plus c, and we want to rewrite that so it looks like well, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Um, so this, what happens here is x minus h squared, you have to complete the square given this ax squared and this bx term. So if you have y equal to x squared plus 5x minus 2, and you want to write that in vertex form, you first just want to consider the first two terms in this equation and complete the square given those two terms. So you can rewrite this as y equals x squared plus 5x and then give yourself a space here so you can complete the square with those two terms. So I have to add b over 2 squared here to complete the square with these two terms. So add 5 over 2 squared there. Well then you have must add 5 over 2 squared to this side. So then you have y plus 25 over 4 is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 25 over 4 minus 2. But remember that you added this 25 fourths here so you could complete the square. So this factors now. You have y plus 25 over 4 is equal to x plus 5 halves squared minus 2, and then you just have to subtract this 25 fourths from both sides. So subtract 25 fourths here, subtract 25 fourths here. And then what do you end up with? You end up with y equals x plus 5 halves squared minus 2 is actually 8 fourths, so 8 fourths minus 25 fourths, 8 fourths minus 25 fourths, that's negative 33 fourths, so y is equal to x plus 5 halves squared minus 33 fourths. That means the vertex is the point negative 5 halves, negative 33 fourths. And you've taken something in standard form and rewritten it in vertex form. <coughs> so it can get a little harder if your a value is not equal to 1 initially. So let's look at an example where your a value is not equal to 1 initially. So maybe you have something like y equals 3x squared plus 9x minus uh, 2. Okay. So again, you're going to group these two terms. y is equal to group these two terms and factor out that 3 so that your a value becomes 1 on the inside. So you have x squared plus 3x and then you're going, to, you're going to complete the square with these two terms. So notice that these two statements are the same thing. This is just 3x squared plus 9x minus 2 is equal to y. So I'm going to complete the square here by adding my b value over 2 squared. So let me take it one step further here. I'm going to have to add something to this side of the equation to keep this an equation, but I would like to simplify what's on the right hand first. So I have to add something here. I'm going to find out what it is I need to add. This is x squared plus 3x 
plus 9 fourths. So it may seem like you added 9 fourths to the side, but you didn't because of the distributive property. Remember that this 3 gets distributed to each of these terms. So of this 9 fourths that you added to complete the square, you actually added a total of 27 fourths to this side. So you have to add 27 fourths to this side too to keep it an equation. But now you can complete the square with these three terms here. So you have y plus 27 fourths is equal to 3 times x plus 3 halves squared minus 2. And then you're going to subtract 27 fourths from both sides. So maybe we should write this 2 as 8 fourths. And we subtract 27 fourths from both sides. So you have y is equal to 3 times x plus 3 halves squared, negative 8 fourths minus 27 fourths is minus 35 fourths. Yeah. So the vertex is the point negative 3 halves comma negative 35 